Hello everybody, here we are today finalizing the season previews, of course, with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers closing it off. I apologize, I thought the first game was on Saturday, and as a Lions fan, I feel embarrassed because I kept thinking that they played Saturday. They play tomorrow against Calgary, so this is going to come out the day before the season starts. But yeah, if you're new, please check out the channel, please subscribe. If you're not, no big deal. If you're not going to subscribe, no big deal. Uh, but let's get into Winnipeg's season preview. So the first talking point is going to be how aggressive will Winnipeg be on offense. Now to be fair, I thought I had more time, so these notes aren't completely done. We're just going to kind of freehand it, and we're going to talk about Winnipeg as a team last year the blue bombers are a group that last year were dangerous this year could be even more so um you know dalton Joe, a guy that came in and was just outstanding as a rookie he's going to be back he's going to be getting more experience and he's going to be in a situation where he's around continually better better players it seems like they just age like a fine wine Kenny Lawler, he is back after playing in Edmonton. Now, granted, Kenny is not going to be able to play right away. He does have that issue uh, with the whole incident where it was the driving situation. We're not going to get into that, but he is out for a little bit. I don't exactly know how long he'll be out. They still have other guys, too. You've got Wolitarski. Um, they have just Nick Dimsky still there. I don't think Rashid Bailey is. I thought I remember posting something about Rashid Bailey being gone, but they're in a great situation right now where they're just going to be able to push the ball downfield. Actually, with Pro Football Focus, ended up uh, posting that Zach Claros last year led the league in most big-time throws. Don't exactly know what that means, but I do know one thing. A lot of Winnipeg's receivers, especially like Dalton Schoen, they were really able to get receptions way down the field. I think that the average depth of target for Dalton Schoen was towards the top end of the league, just basically meaning that every time Claros threw it, on average, that they really were trying to get Claros down further down the field and make big plays. That's going to be big for them. The offense is going to be pushing it big time. I'm also curious to see how aggressive they're going to be when it comes to running the ball. Last year, you know, with Johnny Augustine and Brady Oliveira, I think that they were in a situation where they thought they'd be better than they were at running the ball and at times that they struggled to run the ball. The biggest thing is going to be whether or not Oliveira can take a step forward. He was viewed as Andrew Harris's replacement, not saying that he's necessarily a bad player or anything, but this was kind of a letdown year. We we're hoping for a little bit more. If they can figure out how to run the ball extremely well again and how to throw the ball the way that they did last year with this offense humming, and just routinely beating and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of those other teams in the league that were the best teams in the league and winning those games. This offense is going to be dangerous. Kalaros is probably going to win more hardware. Some of these other guys on the offense will probably win more hardware, including the offensive line, which has continued to you know do their thing. So I think that this year this offense will be aggressive and probably one of the league's best in all actuality. Second talking point is whether or not this core is still good enough. I think that a lot of times you think about these guys and you think of well they just went 15 and 3 they're really good but you also don't think about the fact that a lot of these guys that are these core guys are you're older they are more prone to injuries they obviously have more wear and tear on their bodies they are mentally and physically you know in a spot where they really had to sacrifice a lot for their professional playing career and you do wonder a bit about some teams whether or not they're able to continue their success winnipeg is one of the best if not the best team in the league at what we saw last season yes i know toronto won the great cup does not mean that uh, you would probably bet on toronto being the better team over the course of an 18 regular 18 game season uh, but with Winnipeg, they really focused kind of on the opposite of what Hamilton did. And in Hamilton's season preview, I talked about how they were more focused on obtaining talent, whereas Winnipeg was more focused on retention. I don't exactly know how many guys they went out and got in free agency. I know Lawler obviously was the biggest one. I don't remember a bunch of names, but I do know they went out and they just kept re-signing guys that were free agents that were their guys. They were guys that played for them, and they bring back this core. Is it still good enough? That's going to be the biggest talking point, I think, for this team as the years progress because then every other team is probably going to be doing things to try to match them if they are the best team. Winnipeg has been a club that's been in the Grey Cup for multiple years in a row now, and they're in a situation where their guys are looking to add more to their legacies but also have to deal with the fact that other teams, again, are trying to vamp up and try to beat them because teams like Hamilton... Boy, are they motivated if they have to play Winnipeg. And for this club, I do think they're in a spot where they should be good enough to continue things going well for them. 
but you do wonder at what point are they going to have to say, you know, we might have to retool the roster a bit and focus a little bit more on some youth. The third talking point was a little bit harder because Winnipeg is the team that we all know that they're going to be probably, and that was whether or not Sergio Castillo could provide some consistency at the kicking position. Winnipeg didn't have as many issues at the kicker spot last year with Mark Leggio, but they did just release him. And of course, there was the whole incident in the Great Cup. Legio did struggle in 2021, and they had some kicking issues big time in 2021. That was a big concern about whether or not they're going to win or lose the Great Cup because of that as the season progressed there. Now they bring back Sergio Castillo, a guy that has played for them before, coming off of a pretty good year for Edmonton. He is a guy that's a little bit older, but for kickers, you're not as worried about that. I'm not a very big NFL guy, but I know Adam Vinatieri, of course, played into his mid-40s, I want to say. If he is able to go out there and provide consistency while they're kicking and getting points, maybe when the offense isn't clicking as much, you know that the defense is probably going to be in a good spot to, you know, just get them wins. And that's kind of the big thing. So let's talk about the final points here. And while this isn't as well put together as some of the other videos, I do apologize about that. Again, my fault. Let's talk about what I think Winnipeg's season will be like and how I think they'll play. Biggest thing for them, in my eyes, is just getting out to the right start and not having Kolaros get injured. I think Kolaros' health has been overstated a little bit, but with a guy like him, one bad knock to the head could be a bad problem for them. Yes, they have weapons. Yes, they are very good, but they're in a spot right now where they know they are good enough to probably compete, if not be the favorite for the Grey Cup. In fact, basically every odds maker has them as a Grey Cup favorite for good reason. They're a team that just went 15-3 and and barely lost the Grey Cup. I don't exactly know what's going to happen here with the Blue Bombers. I don't imagine them finishing less than the top spot in the West. In fact, I do think they probably have a good chance of having the best record in the CFL again this year, but it really depends on A, Claros' health, like I said, and B, if they're able to get back to running the ball well. They went 15-3 and without running the ball probably the way they would have wanted. Uh, Jackson Jeffco too, if he's able to be healthy, and that was kind of an issue I think that they dealt with last year. That'll be kind of a talking point while well, they also figure out some other things on the defensive end. But again, this group is, they're here, they're you know, a group that's been together for a while now, and they've been progressively one of the best teams in the league since, well, for a while. That's kind of the situation we're dealing with. This is a club that has not missed the Grey Cup since 2018, and they are looking to get back after a heartbreaker last year. So I think they'll get there, and I think they have the best chance probably to win the Grey Cup this season, meaning it would be the third time in four seasons that the Blue Bombers end up winning it after what would be four straight Grey Cup appearances. But what are your thoughts on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers this season? Do you think that they will be the best team in the CFL, or do you think that they're finally going to take a step back a little bit? as the roster ages a little bit too and there is a potential for injuries i'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments also please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new everybody stay safe and have a great night